It's reading time with Steffi. Today's book is My Little Golden Book About the Statue of Liberty, written by Jen Arena. The Statue of Liberty is one of America's most famous landmarks. But in 1865, more than 150 years ago, the statue was nothing more than an idea. A professor in France wanted to give America a special gift for its 100th birthday to honour the friendship between the two countries. He pictured a giant statue, a symbol of liberty. The professor told everyone about it at a dinner party. A sculptor who was there liked the idea. Yes, it would be a giant statue of a woman, Liberty with one arm raised to hold a torch, a great light to shine through the darkness. The Statue of Liberty will be tall, 151 feet. It would be made of copper. Copper was lightweight and it was cheaper than other metals. Plus, copper was easy to shape. But what would hold the statue up inside? The sculptor didn't know. He'd figure that out later. With copper, the sculpture could also create the Statue of Liberty in pieces. The pieces would fit together like a puzzle. He started with a very important part, the torch. A team of men worked for months to get it done. What was the rush? The professor and the sculpture wanted to send the torch to America. The whole statue wouldn't be done for America's 100th birthday, but one part could be. In August 1876, the torch was shown at the Centennial Exhibition in Philadelphia. It was a hit. After the fair, the torch stayed in America for six years. It stood in a New York City park until the rest of the statue was finished. Back in Paris, the sculpture worked on the statue's head. When it was done, people paid to go inside. They climbed the stairs to look out the windows in Liberty's crown. With this and other money-making ideas, the professor raised enough to complete the statue. But what would hold the statue up? The sculptor finally found an engineer to solve the problem. He turned out to be a good choice. He went on to build the Eiffel Tower. For the Statue of Liberty, the engineer made a framework of iron beams and bars. The framework was strong but not stiff. It would flex in high winds as well as hot and cold weathers. The Statue of Liberty finished in 1884 and was displayed in Paris for more than a year. Then it was shipped in pieces to America. The statue still needed a base to stand on. America would have to pay for that part, but the United States government said no. Some people thought the statue was silly. Luckily, the owner of a New York newspaper stepped up. He asked his readers to give money for the base. He promised to print in his paper the names of everyone who sent money. No amount was too little. School kids sent their pennies, soldiers, factory workers, farmers and doctors gave, too. More than a hundred thousand people helped. Twenty-one years after the professor's party in France, the Statue of Liberty stood complete on an island in New York Harbour, ready for another celebration. A huge French flag covered the face. The sculpture pulled a cord and the flag dropped away. 
whistles blew, people cheered. The Statue of Liberty was home. Back then, the statue was the colour of a copper penny. As the years went by, the weather turned it green. Lines from a poem about freedom were added to the statue in 1903. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to be free. The statue changed in another way too. Over time, it became a powerful symbol. Millions of people from other countries came to New York by ship, seeking better lives in the United States. Some had left their homes because of war. Some had left because they felt unsafe. Others wanted religious freedom. Once they arrived in America, they became workers, business owners and inventors. They helped make America a great country. Lady Liberty greeted them all. To those people, the Statue of Liberty stood for America. It stood for hope. It stood for freedom. She still stands for those things today.